Hello again. Today I will tell you something about how to deal with excited and damped vibration of the multi degree of freedom system. I mean, here we have the ex excited and damped because it, it's important. And damped vibration. Vibration and it will be about multi degree of freedom systems. Okay, and like last time, we'll be considering a simple multi degree of freedom system. I mean, it will be two degree of freedom system. I mean, we have the two masses connected by some elastic spring with the constant C, and it will be fixed. I mean, it will be connected with the wall with the same element and the difference will be here because I will introduce some excitation in the form of the F0 times maybe cosine cosine omega t. Okay, let's try to deal with first we have to like always find the governing equation that is why I will introduce two frames x1 x2 usual yeah, like usually and in the next step using i don't know newtonian or Lagrangian mechanics we have to find the governing equation equations it will be for that case mx double dot plus 2kx1 we remember that thing from our previous videos and it will be left hand side of that equation the same if we are talking about the second equation I will I mean we'll have the inertia term minus k x 1 plus 2 k x 2 that form and the difference is here because last time in our case there was the zeros here this time we'll have the f zeros mm, sorry cosine omega t and he will have the zero because due to second generalized coordinate we don't have any excitation okay and it's a system of equation that is why we will apply the matrix form of that thing i mean we'll have the inertia matrix in that form x1 double dot x2 double dot plus the same stiffness matrix let's say like last time x1 x2 and the difference is here because here we have the f0 0 vector times cosine omega t and the matrix form of that thing will be as follows inertia matrix times acceleration plus stiffness matrix times displacement vector and it's equal to f vector uh, where on times let's say cosine omega t where the y is given by the x1 x2 and the f vector is f0 zero, 0 okay and we know that if we have the non-homogeneous uh, system of linear equations the solution the general solution it will be composition of the general solution of the homogeneous equation and we know how to deal with that because we spoke about it uh, about that problem uh, in the previous video i mean in the video about the free and damped vibration of the multi-degree of freedom system and there will be the second part uh, second part i mean the answer dynamic answer of the system uh, on the excitation i mean the right hand side and today we will be dealing with the particular solution because it's the name of that thing how to find that solution like in the case of the single degree of freedom system i mean we have to assume some predicted solution okay and in this time like typically uh, we will assume that it will be c matrix i mean the sorry c vector times sine omega t plus d times cosine omega t we'll remember that approach from the uh, theory of the differential equation that if we have the right hand sign the form of the 
carmonic process, I mean the sine or cosine uh, composition, then we will have to uh, predict the solution exactly in the same form where the omega is exactly the same frequency the phase shift and the effective amplitude could be different and it's expressed by the c and d coefficient okay and what do we have to do next of course like always we have to compute the second derivative it will be important from the point of view of the further substitution and here we have the minus omega square times c times sine omega t where the c is the vector minus omega square times d times cosine omega t where the d is again the vector of the amplitudes of the system response now we have to put the derivatives and the displacement i mean the solution to our governing equation i mean here and then we will get some system of equations algebraic equation which give us the solution i mean the values of the unknown uh, parameter C and D. I mean the components C and D. I mean here we have the minus omega zero minus omega square times C times sine omega T minus omega square times D times cosine omega T. Everything will be multiplied by ma inertia matrix. We have to add the stiffness matrix times c times sine omega t plus d cosine omega t and here we have the right hand side in the form of the f times cosine omega t okay now we can rearrange our equation i mean after some simple rearrangement we'll get that there will be the k i mean i will connect the elements connected with the um, similar functions i mean i will try to take the common factor in the form of the sine omega t and in the form of the cosine omega t. Okay, let's put the numbers. I mean, here we have the k minus omega square times uh, times c times sine omega t due to that component, that component, and that component in the moment. Uh, plus, oh, I forgot about something. Sorry, my bad. I forgot about the inertia matrix. Mm. I mean, during the arrangement, I forgot about the inertia matrix. Now everything is good. Now I mean uh, times c times sine omega t, and exactly the same form we'll get if we are talking about the cosine component. I mean it will be the plus k minus omega square times inertia matrix times d times cosine omega t and on the right hand side we have the f0 times cosine omega t now as we see it's easy to compare the coefficients of the similar elements because here we see the 0 times sine omega t and in the next step we will get the system of two algebraic equations i mean from the f one hand we have such a solution that it means that it's a time c equals zero due to our left hand side and right hand side of the sine component and the same if we are talking about the i mean if we are talking about the cosine component it gives us that k minus omega square times m times d times it will be equal to f okay it means if we are talking about the sine component we have the homogeneous equation the exactly the same equation which we solved when we are dealing with the eigenfrequencies it means that we cannot or we shouldn't uh, consider the case where the determinant is zero okay i mean we were dealing with this with the uh, situation with the cases where the omega square is not equal to om small omega zero square okay it caused that because if we don't can assume if we don't uh, if we don't assuming that that determinant of that thing won't will be zero we have to assume or we can find the value that c is exactly zero okay what about 
the next step, what about the second equation? Now we have the different situation than in the previous case. Here we have the homo non-homogeneous equation. It means that the determinant cannot be zero and we will find the exact solution uh, for some values of the omega square. When the determinant will be zero, it means that the system won't have any solution. It is the difference between the eigenvalue problem, I mean with the problem where the right hand side is zero and with our problem. I mean when the determinant will be zero, we don't have any solution. Okay, I mean it will be some kind of the explanation why the resonance phenomenon could occur also in the multi-degree of freedom system. How to find the solution? In really simple way. I mean we have to compute, like always, we have to find the main matrix of the system. I mean the matrix of the coefficient of our unknowns because D is composed of the D1 and D2 as a first and second component and the main matrix of the entire system it will be k minus omega square times inertia matrix and also we have uh, find the um, with something which will be matrices connected with the first and second component I mean we have to take the entire matrix I mean the A matrix and we have to replace the first and second column with the vector of the left right hand sides. Okay, for that thing we need to know the exact form of the main matrix. Okay, in our case it will be 2k minus omega square times a minus k minus k and the same value here I mean the 2k minus omega square m. I, and then a1 it will be the main matrix where we will replace the first column with the vector of the right hand sides. I mean it will be F0, 0, 0 and minus K, 2K minus omega square M. And if we are talking about the second component, due to the Kramer method, we will have the 2K minus omega square M minus k f 0 and 0 and now we are able to find the solution it's easy because the d1 component will be given by the determinant of the first matrix over the determinant of the main matrix d2 component will be given by the determinant of the a2 matrix over determinant of the A matrix. How to find the values? Firstly, let's compute the determinant of the A. It will be easy thing because he will have 2k minus omega square m square minus the product of the elements from the counter diagonal, I mean minus k square. Okay, it will be the determinant of the first thing, I mean, I will put that value here. What about the determinant of that thing? It's easy to compute because for the A1, we see that it will be F0 times that term minus 0. It means that he will have F0 times 2K minus omega square M over va computer, our computed value, 2K minus omega square M square minus k square. The second thing, similar approach, I mean here we have the 0 as a first product minus f0 times k with minus due to the way how we have to compute the uh, determinant and that is why it will be the positive number and it will be divided by the 2k minus omega square times m squared minus k square. Okay, and now we have the values of the entire solution. What is the exact form, I mean the final form of the predicted form of our solution? We have to put that component to our uh, predicted form. I mean we have to put that component exactly here. We see that there won't be sign element in our solution due to 
that equation and there will be only that thing okay let's put everything together and as a solution we have that it's a uh, f0 as a common factor 2k minus omega squared times m as a second component we will have uh, the k and there will be the cosine omega t divided by the determinant of the main matrix i mean 2k minus omega square m squared minus k square because it will be uh, it can be also treated as a common part of our entire solution and as you see it isn't especially complicated to find the solution of the excited undamped vibration of the multi-degree freedom system i uh, believe that that material will be useful for you thank you for attention See you next time.